Good morning, good morning. God bless you, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Brock. God bless you. Welcome back. Um, if this is your first time, if this is your first time, um, let me just let you know that um, there's no coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences, personally. So if you're here, um, it wasn't by accident. Um, you came by the video, the live stream, um, the podcast for a purpose and a plan from God. Amen. I'm not God, obviously, but God draws, attracts, draws his people, amen, draws people to himself. For the, so that way you could get a radical revelation of who he is, the Lord Jesus, amen. Um, that's how I was drawn to the Lord, amen. It was radical. It was crazy. I know I was prayed into the kingdom for sure, um, but that's a whole different story. But God bless you. Today, on the Morning Devo, we're continuing the series of Jesus Said What? And I believe this is episode number 32. Amen. Yeah, number 32. And that's a, we've been on this for a minute then. Amen. There's so many things that the Lord said out of his very own mouth. So I'm quoting Jesus. I'm quoting God. Amen. I'm quoting what the Lord said. So therefore, we get a revelation, an understanding together of what the Lord Jesus is saying and what he said already and what he accomplished by saying something. Amen. And if you know, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I'm a born again believer in Christ Jesus. And I love to study the life of Jesus, the Christ, my Lord and my Savior. So today is interesting because today we're talking about a topic um, that I believe is running crazy throughout the land. It's been it's been that way for a long time. It's not nothing new. It's just that when you look at it closely, you realize, wow, um, that's strange how people say this. Let me just read. If you have a problem with religious hypocrites, some people call me a religious hypocrite. But if you have a problem with religious hypocrites, you are not alone. So does God. God has a problem with religious hypocrites. Today, we're going to talk about spiritual, but not religious. You ever heard somebody say, hey, I'm not a Christian, but I'm spiritual. I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. That's a movement that's been going on for a very, very long time. But it's repackaged, rebranded, and people come with that over and over again. For whatever reason, they stay out of Christianity. Amen. For good reasons, for whatever reason. Um, but because you're staying out of Christianity, you're not getting close to the realization of who Christ is, the God of the Christians. Amen. Christianity. OK. You know, a lot of people, you know, including myself, I'm really skeptical about Christianity. But being born again is something. Being born again is amazing. Being born again is what Jesus offers. He offers eternal life, the born again experience and all of that. So I have really no issue with Christianity other than the religious part of it. There's a spirituality of Christianity. There's a religious part of Christianity. There's traditions and belief systems that I don't really get down with. Amen. But being born again is I, well, almost a basic. It's not basic, but it is foundational for a believer to be born again. Jesus said you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. So if we're kingdom People, amen, so we should be under the King Jesus and we're born again. Believers in Christ. We're going to be in Matthew 23, verses 23 to 25. Last time I hit Matthew um, chapter 23, I was talking about the tithe in the New Covenant Church, amen. And uh, I'm pretty much settled with that in my heart, the tithe, amen. If you know me, I was investigating the tithe for like three years Asking questions, getting on national broadcasts, uh, radios, um, hosts, and asking a question, asking pastors, evangelists, uh, people that I know, people that I don't know. For three years, I was going around asking that question because I was concerned about how um, we were hearing the tithe preached in the New Covenant Church. But that's a whole nother issue. But we're going to see what the Lord, we're going to read what the Lord spoke of. When it came to tithe and things along that way. Matthew 23, 23 to 25. So at any time, at any given moment, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it 
on the live chat. Also, if you want to privatize your message, you could always inbox me from whatever social media platform you're listening or watching from. Amen. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So listen, let's pray. After we pray, we'll take 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as we can during that time. Even after the 60 seconds, if it's not too distracting for you, amen, you can send people to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. That's live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Um, going forward, I'm going to be putting that website, uh, all the events that I have posted all through social media. Because I realized that um, we're not only on Facebook, we're not only on you know, in, um, Twitter and all those and YouTube, we're also on live. That's so is with a Z.org, which, by the way, I want to keep it there. I want to really use this platform live. That's so is with a Z.org to be the main platform. And you'll like it. It has a live chat, it has a Bible right there on the website as a place where you can subscribe to my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check me out on some other social media platforms. Amen. And you sign up. It's a one and done deal. It takes less than 40 seconds. Nice picture, your name, how you want me to call you, right? And your best email address so I could connect with you outside of the matrix, outside of this social media platform. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for that person right now, today, that's going to hear your word and get the revelation of who you are, what you spoke, and what you spoke of. I thank you, Lord God, that although we are spirit beings, we are also human beings, and we are also um, derived of three things spirit and then we have the flesh and then we have the body right and we thank you lord god for you that you created us you gave us a way of thinking you gave us free will you gave us the ability to choose and i thank you for your your choice of us lord god that you created us in your image i thank you lord god for every single person that's connecting now who will connect later I pray, Lord God, life over them. I speak life in the name of Jesus. I pray against any demonic influence over their lives in the name of Jesus, that any curses, any hexes, anything that's generational, ancestral, that is not of you, Lord God, we break those things right now in the powerful name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, freedom. I pray, Lord God, peace. I pray, Lord God, your authoritative word will just, just really impact us so much today. That we would know who we are in you and identify in you because of what you've done through us and in us. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over me and my family and everyone's family that's represented on the other side of the screen and the other side of this mic. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So listen, let's go for it. 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as possible. And when we come back, we'll dive into Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 to 25. I'll be right back. Lost track of time there as I was sharing and sharing and sharing. Amen. I don't realize how many groups I'm in. I'm I'm finally looking through the groups and praise God, whoever is not allowing me to share uh, these morning devos. I'm kind of like exiting out of the group because I'm, I'm thinking like this. If we're all born again, we're trying to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Amen. And then let's share it. Amen. You come to my group, I'll share 
the message of the gospel, whatever you have to share, I'll share that on my platform as well. As long as it's not crazy, and I understand that a lot of people uh, might think my message is a little off the way I present it, and the same way on the other end, I might think the same of your ministry or your group as well. So, of course, we have to test each other, test all spirits, amen, so that way we know that we're coming with something good from the scriptures, amen. So, let me take a minute before we get into the presentation that I have for the screens. Amen. And if you're listening from the podcast, although you can't see it, but there's a link in the description that you could come to a website later on, uh, because I know I understand podcasts only, uh, audio only people want it that way. But whenever you want to see the presentations of these morning devos, there's always a link in the description. And if you can't find the exact one, amen, which it should be easy to find. If you can't find the exact morning devo that you want, you could always email me at DJ Sandrock um, at Sonewinners with a Z dot org. All right. Let's just define some terms here. What is spiritual but not religious? What is spiritual but not religious? That's a movement that's been going on for a very long time. People say that. And I think they're just trying to dodge Jesus. I think they're just trying to bypass Jesus and say that they're spiritual without ever going to the one who created them. If that makes sense. So no one really knows exactly where the phrase originated from. But there was a a person who wrote a book, Seven Erlanson. He described it as a movement in his book, Spiritual But Not Religious. He wrote a book about it. And, uh, you know, he coined uh, the SB and R, you know, that spiritual but not religious movement. Those are the um, letters for it. He thinks it was around 2000, more than a decade later, uh, when he wrote this book, around 2000, uh, he wrote this book. It's quite a trend. It's still trending right now on the Internet, still trending all over social media platforms. And that was um, 23 years ago. But way before that, people were saying this. So how did spiritual and religious come to be regard- regarded as mutually exclusive or at least mutually incompatible In the minds of so many people, right? That's a good question. How did that happen? We're going to get to it. And we're going to see what Jesus has to say about it. Because that's a religious hypocrisy. If you're saying you're spiritual but not religious, what are you spirit? Whose spirit are you following? And what spirit do you have in you that you're staying away so-called from religion? Anyway, spiritual. Look up the word spiritual online, right? And... You'll, you'll see in the Merriam-Webster, you'll see that spiritual is of relating to, consisting of, or affecting the spirit, and is also related to sacred matters and concerned with religious values. So that's spirit, spiritual, religious values. So I don't know how it's possible to separate the two, but let's keep on going. If you do a little deeper, dig a little deeper, and get Latin spiritualis from Latin, of breathing, of wind, from spiritists. So the source of true spirituality is actually the divine breath of God. That's true spirituality. So if you want to dodge Jesus and saying you're spiritual, and then you're dodging God because Jesus is God. How about the word religious? Search the word religious, Google it, Bing it. I know Bing is another um, thing. I hardly ever use Bing, but that's a search engine. Um, You look up the word religious, um, you come up with words like devout, pious, reverence, godly, God-fearing, faithful, devoted, committed, a religious person. So that's kind of, sounds good, right? But it has to be a balance there. So if you're going around saying you're spiritual but not religious, where's your balance? And what spirit are you talking about? And what religion are you talking about that you're staying away from? Okay. You dig a little deeper, you'll find religious comes from the Latin religio, meaning reverence, obligation, reverence, obligation. Amen. So let's get into what the scripture says before I give you any more definitions. I'm just wanting to give you some background of what I'm talking about when it comes to spiritual and religious, spiritual and religious, because people say, yes, Sam, I'm not, you know, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Amen. And I would ask you. What spirit are you talking about? That's all. 
That's all. I think that's a fair question. It's not too too deep. It's personal, but when people say they're spiritual but not religious, uh, they're opening up the door for a personal question. Amen? At least in my, in my viewpoint. Like you say, you're spiritual. What spirit are we talking about? Let me get this on the screen. Amen? And let's go. All right. So spiritual, you see it right there, but not um, religious. Amen. And why is my cursor there? If I said to hide the cursor. Anyway, that's my one of my pet peeves here. All right. So 23, let's get to it. Matthew 23, 23 to 24. We're quoting what Jesus said. He says, woe to you. That means cursed. Torah scholars and Pharisees. Hypocrites. What? Jesus calls somebody a hypocrite? Religious people, the religious people who were involved with the government, right? They were like um, politicians for religion. Woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites. You tithe mint and dill and cumin, yet you have neglected the weightier matters of Torah, or the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. That's weightier. That's more um, than the law. It's more deeper than the law, according to what Jesus is saying here. Justice and mercy and faithfulness is the weightier matters of Torah, of law. It is necessary to do these things without neglecting, without neglecting the others. Verse 24, O blind guides, straining out a gnat while swallowing a camel. That right there is, we, is what we call hyperbole. Jesus is making an example an exaggerated example of what it is that he's seeing them as, right? But it's also a way he's connecting to the people that he's speaking this to. And it's also a way for us to understand what was going on when Jesus said this. Now, I made sure I took care of this footnote, you tithe. And there's a footnote there if you're watching on the live stream, but there's a footnote after the word tithe is a letter A. That means there's a footnote. And now, for all my friends and family members and brothers and sisters in Christ, listen, we can't deny that Jesus is talking about the law. When he says tithe, he's talking about the law. How do I know? Because it's connected, that word is connected to all these other scriptures. Leviticus 27.30, Deuteronomy 12 and 6 and verse and, and 17 as well, 14 and 22 and 23 of all in De- Deuteronomy. And the most popular one that I've heard preached pretty much all my saved life is Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. You see that? So we can't say that the tithe is not part of the law. The tithe came before the law, right? But we cannot say that it wasn't part of the law, if that makes any sense. All right? So God bless you. Good morning to you as well. Who is this with us on Facebook? You must be on the group. Amen. So let's keep on going here. I don't know why my cursor is showing up on the screen, but I I think I know why. I think I did that because of a tutorial I was doing. Matthew 23 and 25. Woe to you, Torah scholars and Pharisees, hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and uncontrolled desire. So, wow. Jesus cursed these people, these law scholars, these Torah scholars and Pharisees, calling them hypocrites. Hypocrites. Religious hypocrites. Listen, some people call me a religious hypocrite. For whatever reason, I don't want to get into it, but I've been called that. Um, you know, I've been called that. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and uncontrolled desire. Now, why would Jesus say that to people who are going around saying they're very religious and they might be even saying they were spiritual, right? Knowing God is so much more than a set of beliefs and obligations. Jesus is more than a set of beliefs and obligations. 
the word of God is more than a set of beliefs and obligations. Beliefs and obligations. What did we say that was? Beliefs and obligations. We said that was part of being religious. Remember earlier? Amen. You look it up. Look up the word in the dictionary. The words religious and spiritual have been used synonymously to describe the concept of religion. But in contemporary usage, spirituality has often been associated with the interior life of the individual, placing an emphasis upon the well-being of the mind, body, spirit, while religion refers to the organizational and communal dimensions. So people are trying to separate it. You've heard a person say this probably, right? Hey, since I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, I'm dealing with the inner part of myself, the inner part the inner being, my inner self. Some people even go as far as saying my, let's see, my inner self, they say my other life that I lived before. And people are into that reincarnation. They're into karma. They're into all these religious things and spiritual things. Um, But they're not understanding that God is much more than that. His word is much more than a set of beliefs and obligations. Amen? Amen. So these are some questions uh, that I would ask, and you should ask too. You can even ask me if you want, amen, because this is all fair game. Jesus is speaking to the religious people of his time, and he spoke, he cursed them, and he said, man, you you, you follow this, and you're, you're all about the Torah, all about the law, you're going around saying you're religious people, but you're not handling the weightier matters of the law, which was what? Which was the good things of God, right? To do good things for other people and not just be concerned about your own spirituality and your own um, gain and your own advantage point over the people. It's outside, everything looks good, Jesus is saying, I'm paraphrasing, but inside you're still full of corruption and dirt and all that stuff. So I would ask these questions. Do I really want to know God or am I mostly interested in an experience of spiritual well-being? Think about it. A lot of people go to churches, they go to seminars, and they go to places of they chase around spiritual healers, they chase around um, deliverance ministries, they chase all over the world around these people, and they're looking for an experience, right? They're looking for an experience. So the question is, should I ask yourself, I'm asking myself too, do I really want to know God, or am I mostly interested in an experience of spiritual well-being? That's a good question, right? It's a fair, honest question. How about this one? Do I really care about God? Or am I more interested in presenting myself as a deep person that others can see as spiritual? I know a lot of people like that. They want to be real deep. They want to be considered a person uh, that is so spiritual. I know people like that. Growing up the way I grew up, I've seen people like that. I've known people like that. Pretty much all my life, when I was a kid, I used to see a lot of spiritual, deep people um, come and visit my grandma, and they were spiritual. They were deep into it, and it would make me think like, wow, they have a certain power about them. They have a certain understanding uh, about their God, but I was not interested. Thank you, Jesus, because I would have became um, one of those people that I've seen all that time in my life growing up. Let me get back to the scripture here. Right? You see it, or I'm going to read it once again. The spiritual people are not mentioned too much here. It's more like religious people, right? He called them religious hypocrites. So if you have a problem with religious hypocrites, so does God. He says, Woe to you. That means cursed. Torah scholars, which means the law, and Pharisees. The people who believed in the resurrection and they believed in angels, uh, they also believed in the law of Moses and the Levitical law and they believed in tithing and all that. They did all of that, mint and dill and cumin. Yet, Jesus said, yet you have neglected the weightier matters of the law, the Torah, which are justice and mercy and faithfulness has nothing really to do with the religion that they were going around saying um, that was the, you know, 
that was the thing at the time. There's still religious people out there that want to do everything according to the law, or they neglect justice and mercy and faithfulness. So, calls them blind guides, and of course he says in verse 25 of Matthew 23, you can read the whole chapter for yourself, I'm just keying in on these couple of verses. Woe to you, Jesus said, Torah scholars, again, and Pharisees, hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup, um, but inside they are full of greed and uncontrolled desire. So these are the type of things that Jesus would say to the people of his time. And he's saying to the people of our time who are going around thinking they're all of that. And they're so spiritual. They're so religious. Amen. So I um, just want to see who's that with me. I guess you're on the group with me. So let me just, um, just I like to personally um, say what's up to people who come by, man. You know me. Uh, Sister Joanne, amen, that's you. God bless you. Good morning to you as well, Sister Joanne, on the group. Amen. So that's what I have today. I know it's a lot, but it, it was interesting to me how this is still happening. People are saying, man, listen, Sam, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual, but not religious. Amen. Spiritual, but not religious. So, you know, I, that's why I don't go to church. These are what people say to me. That's why I don't go to church. You know, I don't believe Jesus is God, but, you know, I know there is a higher power, a higher being, and they don't want to connect with nothing. So they, they want to, like, dodge everything of God. They want to dodge the church. They want to dodge Jesus. Amen. Just to say that they're spiritual, just to say that they're connected somehow, and they want to seem like they're deep, right? Deeper than, you know, religious people. But they actually go hand in hand. And Jesus called these religious people out, right? He says, yeah, you, you're playing the part. Everything on the outside looks like, wow, like you're really wowing the people. But he took the word wow, dropped the, uh, the W at the end, and put the uh, letter E. He says, woe to you. Not wow to you, woe to you. Cursed are you. So that's deep. If Jesus came to the religious people of his time and cursed them, and then there should be something about that, about being so religious that you should back off from, that I should back off from, because I don't want to be cursed, right? And I'm not cursed. I'm born again. Jesus took the curse and the punishment upon himself, amen? Yet he himself did not sin. He himself is not cursed, amen? But he laid his life down on a tree, on a, on a, a tree, on a, uh, he was crucified. And during that time, the crucifixion, whoever was laid up on that cross of the crucifixion, they were considered, you know, popular criminals or they were considered cursed people. And Jesus took upon that curse upon himself once and for all punishment of the whole entire world on himself once for all. And he put took care of the sins of the world, placed it on himself once for all. Yet he himself did not sin. He himself was not a religious person. He himself was not a spiritual person. He himself was Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Mashiach Magid, the anointed one, the only begotten son of God, the one who killed sin for us on our behalf, the one who forgave us, the one who offers forgiveness, the one who offers eternal life, the one who is dealing with spiritual but not religious people. Amen. And... Although I, I wouldn't say, you know, woe to somebody. Jesus said it. Amen. But I would be really, really interested in finding out why people are going around saying they're spiritual but not religious. As soon as they say spiritual, the question is going to come up. Well, what spirit are you talking about? Amen. And those other questions that I, I, I asked earlier that we should ask ourselves or we could ask other people, you know, and do it with a gentle spirit. If that's you, this is not, a, I'm not coming at you. If you said that, I know, no, I never said that. Even when I was not um, born again, I never said that. But I've heard people say that. And I've always had respect for it. But I was always asking the question, what spirit are you talking about? There's like a lot of spirits out here. What spirit? And nine out of ten of them, they would never mention Jesus. They would never mention the God of the Bible. They would talk about saints. They would talk about idols. They would talk about you know, spirits from other places, ancestral beings they would talk about, you know, from the ancestors, but they would hardly ever talk about God. And I, I have a, I have a, an idea 
or I have a, a clue that people are still going around talking that they're spiritual but not religious, and I'm thinking that it'll be the same answer all these years later that I haven't asked anybody or I haven't heard it myself, um, they would talk about other beings, spirits, ancestors, idols, um, gods, so-called gods, but they won't talk about being involved with the Christian God, amen, the God of the Bible, for whatever reason. And I respect people's reasons, but it's just interesting that that's still happening. So many years ago after Jesus said what he said to the Pharisees and to the people who studied the law, right? The Torah people, the Torah scholars, he called them, and the hypocrites that he's called them as well. And hypocrite, that word means play actors, like you're playing a part. Everything on the outside looks legit, but on the inside, God sees the heart. You know, we as human beings, we judge you from the outside. Um, I was watching some videos yesterday, and these guys were doing uh, a social experiment. In other words, they were dressed like they were homeless. They had the homeless sign up, um, and they were giving away some money, some life-changing money for the first person who offered help. So there was a guy outside of Walmart with a big sign, and it was cold that day. He had a big sign. He was dressed like a homeless person. And it was hours, hours before anybody came to help him. And the first person that came to help him, he gave like a thousand dollars, I think it was, amen, in cash. And it was blowing people away. Some people would cry. Some people would say, oh my God, thank you so much. You don't know how much I needed this money. Other people would just be like stunned and amazed. But nobody gave it back. I would not give it back the money either. But I'm just saying, he was doing a social experiment. They wanted to see how many people who claim to be whatever, religious, spiritual, how many people will help somebody else? Yesterday, I was so convicted. I went to uh, get something to eat before I came home, right? Um, and, you know, it was a takeout order in a restaurant. So the waitress came over and they said, oh, you wanted to go? And she joked and said, yeah, that's a better place to eat it right now because I'm about to leave or whatever. And I'm like, in my mind, I already had a tip for whoever helped me. Amen. But you know, I took the food. I looked at us, waved and said goodbye. And as soon as I left out of the door, the Lord was saying, what happened to the blessing? What happened to the tip that you said? You said you because you're you were acting religious in your mindset that you was going to give the first person who helped you, the first waitress or the waiter to help you. And I was like, yeah, oh, man. So I got in my car. And I was thinking about it. it was still bothering me, but I was not reaching for my wallet. And guess what? She came out. The car with the car that she was leaving in was right in front of me. So then I opened the door. I said, hey, I have this for you. I gave it to her. I said, God bless you. Whatever that was, it was for her, for that waitress. Amen. And I have to just let it go and trust God that that blessing was for her and that God bless you was from the Lord. Amen. Because I was so convicted. He was speaking to me and I was like, wow, okay, I blew that one. But it, amen, I had the opportunity to fix it. But I hope you got something out of here. Matthew chapter 23, read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. So that way you know that I'm not taking this out of context. 23, um, Matthew and C, are you spiritual but not religious? Amen. Find out what that means do a heart search, amen, do a word search and see what Jesus is saying in your life and how he wants you to move forward from here. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always, always remember this, that God is good. Peace.